Hello folks, the Coco Fish is available on all servers now, but is she worth the Primo Gems? Well, it depends. Kokomi can do decent burst damage while on field, but is pretty weak outside her burst window. She can also heal the team a lot during her burst, probably way more than what is needed. You can think of Kokomi as a Chi-Chi that does damage. However, with Kokomi on the team, you will need another source of damage while her burst is on cooldown. Either pair her with strong supports, or have another swap DPS so you can alternate damage rotations. Overall, she is good at what she does, pretty fun to play, but not a must pull by any means. First, I will go over her kit in more detail, then talk about her gear, and finally, team comps that can work pretty well. And if you enjoy these kind of videos, then leave a like and comment below, it really helps out. So Kokomi has a 3 hit combo that you will use most of the time. It does do AoE but has a very small radius, so you probably won't notice it unless enemies are stacked on top of each other. Don't bother too much with her charge attack, especially if she's at constellation 1 or higher. Technically, she does do a little more damage with the N1 charge attack combo instead of the N3 combo, but the charge attack comes out faster than Wu Tao, so you end up running out of stamina really fast. Too fast to make it worthwhile. Also, don't bother animation cancelling her first attack. Even with a micro step delay, she still continues with her second attack, so trying to only do N1 is a DPS loss. Her elemental skill puts down a weird looking jellyfish. Instead of tentacles, it has fins. Anyways, the jellyfish will heal and do AoE damage. The heal only affects the active character while inside the AoE, so it will not heal the whole team unless you are in co-op. The damage is decent and it ticks 7 times over 12 seconds, one tick every 2 seconds, plus the initial tick when using the skill. She also gets Hydro on her when she casts the skill, similar to Xing Chou. The Hydro is not constant like Barbara, so it's not as annoying. The Jellyfish also has an internal cooldown of 2 seconds, so every tick will cause an elemental reaction, which is great for vaporized teams. You can only have one Jellyfish at a time. Here I am using 4-piece Thundering Fury to reduce the Jellyfish cooldown and extending it with her burst but the first jellyfish still disappears when I put the new one down. Her elemental burst is the star of her kit. It gives her a buff that increases all her damage by a percentage of her max HP. This buff only lasts 10 seconds with an 18 second cooldown. It costs 70 energy, but with enough energy recharge or a proper team or weapons, you can have full uptime on the burst. Outside of her burst window, Kokomi does very low damage. But she is pretty decent when her burst is active. She still does not compare to hyper carries like Ganyu, but can be a strong swap DPS while your main carry needs to wait for their own cooldowns. Here's the damage difference with and without her burst. At almost 35k health, her normal attack increases by about 4000 damage each. You will see a similar increase with her jellyfish as well. This actually makes her a decent DPS during that window, especially with reactions. Once again, not overpowered, but decent while topping off your team. Both her ascensions are pretty nice. Ascension 2 refreshes the jellyfish when you burst, which saves you time from not needing to cast a new jellyfish during that precious 10 second burst window. It's a nice little quality of life and a small DPS increase. Speaking of DPS increase, her other ascension is just that. It makes her attacks in the burst window do even more damage that scales with her healing bonus. Note that this is healing bonus and not incoming healing bonus. We don't really care about the swimming stamina passive, and her last bonus passive gives her minus 100% crit rate, but extra healing bonus. This negative crit rate can be overcome by building her to have over 100% crit normally, but it seems like a waste of resources outside of going meme builds. The level order of her talents depend on how you play her. The normal order will be her burst, the normal attacks, followed by the skill. That's for a Kokomi that will use her burst and stay on the field for at least 10 seconds dishing out attacks. I think this is the best method to utilize her in the proper teams. The other way is to use her solely for the Jellyfish. It will apply Hydro for a lot longer than Mona and provide some healing. You end up wasting the extra damage from her burst, but if you are running Ganyu or other characters that can consistently do more damage than Kokomi in her burst, then it's actually a DPS game. For those unique support Kokomi builds, focus on her jellyfish first, then the burst. For her constellations, I think C0 is perfectly fine for what she does. Almost all her constellations focuses on her damage output, 
so do not even worry about that if you only want her to heal. Here's the average DPS increase that each constellation does. As you can see, constellation 1 gives the best DPS jump by adding an extra hit to at the end of her 3 hit combo. You can get 4 full combos inside that 10 second burst window. Her C2 gives her a little healing bonus which will also affect her damage. C4 increases her attack speed which will let her do 5 full combos and increase her DPS even more. And finally, the expensive constellation 6 is again a huge spike to her DPS but at what cost? Moving on to weapons, her best weapon is the new purple donut. But if we look at the theory crafting graph, other weapons do not drop her DPS that much. That's because she has a pretty high DPS floor due to her kit. Her default low attack stats and the inability to crit makes HP stacking her most common way for damage, which only shines during her burst. This makes weapon choice for Kokomi not that important. All the weapons are pretty decent on her, but you should still focus on the ones that increases elemental damage, HP, or energy recharge. The Inazuma weapon is very good for an electro charge team, but I don't want to consume that fox mask in my inventory. Anyways, just avoid the crit weapons, unless again, you are memeing. Here's a list of viable weapons. There isn't a huge gap between many of the weapons, so pick the ones you have available. Once again, you want to aim towards elemental damage, HP, or energy recharge. Her artifact choices is actually a godsend to those with horrible luck. She doesn't need any crit, so all those useless HP artifacts can finally find a home. Regardless of whether using her for damage or pure healing, the stat priority for her artifacts is the same. You want HP% percent Sand, Hydro Goblet, and Healing Bonus Helmet. This combo will give you the most damage and healing. If you cannot find a Healing Helmet, then you can still opt in for an HP% percent Helm. For substats, HP% percent is King, followed by Energy Recharge, enough to keep up her burst, which will depend on your team and weapon. For example, if you are using a Prototype Amber, having around 140% energy recharge is more than enough. Then we want flat HP and attack percent. Both of those stats give a similar damage increase, but the flat HP does help out with healing by a little bit. Since Kokomi is pumping out Hydro so fast, in most teams she will not be the one causing reactions so EM might not be beneficial. Now for the artifact sets. Once again, this depends on her role. For a damage build, you want 4 piece Heart of Death. The 4 piece buff lasts for her entire burst window, so great synergy there. You can also do 2 piece Heart plus 2 piece Tenacity or Maidens. Maidens will give more damage and healing, but Tenacity isn't that far behind. There is also the 4 piece Thunder Soother set if you are running an Electro Charge team. However, these sets are always limited on how useful they are in some situations, like certain Abyss enemy layouts. For a support build, you want 4 piece tenacity. The jellyfish will constantly provide the attack buff for the whole 12 seconds. You will need to fight near the jellyfish though, which can be annoying, but the AoE on it is pretty big, so you shouldn't have too much of an issue. If you really hate that set, then go 2 piece tenacity and 2 piece maidens for healing. But she should already be overhealing in most situations. For team comps, there are 4 different types that she fits in. The Electro Charge and Vaporize teams highlight Kokomi as a DPS. In Freeze teams, Kokomi is an alternate support for Mona, and you can also fit Kokomi in any miscellaneous teams that needs a sub DPS. Let's go in order. For an Electro Charge team, you want two Electro characters. The usual pair is Beidou and Fischl. You can also add the Raiden Shogun on this team to replace one of the Electro Ladies, or Sarakujo for a damage buff. The last slot should be an Anemo character to debuff enemies with the 4 piece Venera set. This is probably my favorite team since lightning will be bouncing all over the place, and it's very easy to play. You can also take advantage of the Inazuma Catalyst and the 4 piece Thunder Soother set, as long as enemies are not immune to Electro. For the Vaporize team, you want Shangling and another Pyro unit to act as battery. Kokomi alone is enough Hydro, so the last slot should be an Anemo character with 4 piece Venera again, or you can run a Zhongli to increase team damage. To take full advantage of this team, make sure to stay in melee range of the Pyro Nato, since that will be doing a lot of your damage, especially when outside of Kokomi's burst window. For freeze teams, the main DPS will be Ganyu or Ayaka. If you have neither, then Rosaria or Kaya can work, 
but just not as effective. You also want a cryo battery to help out the main DPS. Then we have Kokumi, who can apply Hydro and heal the team. The last slot is usually another Anemo support to help out with keeping enemies frozen. Then there's your variety team, where Kokumi is a swap DPS. The important character is Kokumi and her DPS buddy. The other two slots depend on who you pick as a DPS. You want to pick a DPS that does high damage with their abilities in a small time span. Characters that fit that role are Child, Wu Tao, Xiao, and the Raiden Shogun. Pretty much those that have a very strong burst window, but are kind of weak outside of it. Overall, Kokumi isn't a game changer. Her damage is on the average side of things, but she can heal your party while doing DPS. Therefore, you don't really need any crazy weapons and still perform well with her. She is also a great sink for your non-crit artifacts, and she works on a variety of teams. If you already have decent teams for the Abyss or are on the fence about pulling for Kokumi, then wait until we get news on future banners. There is 21 days between each banner, so no need to rush your decision. Anyway, that's all I got for now. If this video was helpful, think about subscribing, and as always, have fun out there, traveler. The wind knows.